Hi, my name is David Shiner, and family is important to me, and so are my clients. At Shiner Law Group, I want to treat every client like they're part of my family. If you've been involved in an accident, pick up the phone and give me a call. Let's talk about what my team of professionals can do to help you. Welcome to another episode of Business Highlight. My name is Pedro Heiser. I am the managing editor of the Boca Raton Tribune. And today I have the pleasure of having Yaakov Heller with me. Yaakov, how are you doing? I'm doing really good. I'm back at work. Yeah, that's true. It's How, how long were you out of, like, not working for because of the virus? Oh, about two months. Wow. Yeah, two months. Wow. I didn't waste my time. I mean, I was home on my computer working on my website. Yeah. But, uh, and it's something I wouldn't have done normally. I would be working with my hands in my studio, either painting or sculpting. Right. But actually, I took advantage of that time to build my website. That's awesome. And that website, if you guys are interested in, it's yakovheller.com. It's going to be in the bottom of your screen. It's right now, actually. It's right there. <laughs> so, Yakov. Um, for those that don't know you, because you're very well known in the community, but for those people that don't know you and you know on watching our live right now, could you, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started, and things like that? I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. Born and raised in Cleveland, uh, into a family of artists on my mother's side. My mother was an artist. My two sisters were artists. My mother's brothers, my uncle Ben. My Uncle Dave, they were both artists, professional artists. And my older sister, she nurtured my art career. She was like 12 years older than I was. And she saw that I had talent when I came home from school at five years old with an elephant that I had made in clay. Mm -hmm. And uh, parents said, take it back where you stole it from, because they didn't believe I made it. <laughs> so I always uh, knew that I had talent, and my... And my parents and my uh, sister especially, uh, they mentored me and pushed my art career, made me into what I am today, actually. And my yeah. uncle, also my Uncle Ben was a professional uh, cartoonist. He was with American Greeting Card Company. Oh, wow. Uncle Dave was a portrait artist and also a hairstylist. He had to make a living in between <laughs> portraits. And they had an influence on my life. I also did the same things that they did. I became a hairstylist and did everything I had to do. When I joined the Navy, I left Cleveland at 17, joined the U.S. Navy. I was sent to Miramar Naval Air Station in San Diego, California, and they had me designing squadron patches for uh, the different air squadrons. Wow. I wound up going on the USS Forrestal, 
traveling the Mediterranean with the Sixth Fleet and doing portraits of sailors' wives and girlfriends and children. And uh, so I was always an artist, you know, that's with my sister who left for Israel when it became a state. She left Cleveland. She was, like I say, she was 12 years older than I was. And she settled on a kibbutz in the Negev Desert, a pioneer, and went through her first three pregnancies going to an outhouse. Wow. And plumbing. When I went there the first time, when I was 13 years old, my parents sent me for the summer mm-hmm. to visit her. And every rock I would kick over a rock, and there was a scorpion or a snake. It was really a, a, a desert pine. But they made it bloom. They, yeah. they National Fund planting trees. They made it into today. It looks like a gated community in Boca. Not quite. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, did you always have that I'm going to be an artist mentality, or did you were you doing something else before? Like, what what got you into what you're doing today? I have never done anything else except create art. Whether it was with a, as a hairstylist, I did the Miss Universe pageant. I was te- I was teasing up women's hair back. We're talking about 1963. I did the Miss Universe pageant. Wow. We're teasing up women's hair and f- making fantasy hairstyles out of it. Uh, it was in the days when the hair color, all the different colors, came into fashion with Revlon, mm-hmm. and I was demonstrating their their hair colors using women's hair as a medium for my sculpture, teasing up the hair and spraying it with Aquanet and making designs out of their hair and entering contests and doing platform work and traveling around the country to the different beauty and barber supply shows. So that's what I did when I got out of the Navy. And that was in the early 60s. Then I met somebody who taught me how to make jewelry and uh, showed me the art of lost wax casting. And her name is Lena Anderson. I'm still in touch with her today. She's back in in Sweden. She was married to my best friend. But uh, she taught me how to make jewelry in the lost wax casting method. And from that, I developed my sculpture, making small things, making them larger and larger, learning how to cast them. Uh, melt down the wax and pour the bronze or silver or gold. And wow, that's yeah, that's a lot. So, where did you, where in the story did did you come to Boca? If you're from Cleveland and you traveled with the with the Navy, where where the I'm going to Boca come from? While I was in the Navy, my father retired from business from his hardware. He was a merchant. Okay. My mother's side of the family were artists. My father's side were merchants. <laughs> I guess that's why I have a retail store today. <laughs> but uh, they moved to Hollywood, Florida. They had a home in Hollywood on Coolidge Street. Uh, and from the time my grandmother had a home there, also when I was a kid, five years old, I would come down to Florida Christmas vacation. They had to drag me back to Cleveland kicking and screaming because I hated the cold weather. That, that, that would make sense. I to, to join the Navy, I think, because of the cold weather. I, I learned my lesson. They sent me to Great Lakes, Illinois, to basic wow. training. In January and February, I was outside marching and uh, with the winds from Canada coming across Lake Michigan. <laughs> I learned my lesson. It was colder there than in Cleveland. Yeah, for sure. So when... When did Gallery 22 open, and where did that idea for the for your gallery come from? Well, the name Gallery 22, I had galleries in Israel. We missed that part of the story because I went to Israel uh, many times while I was in the Mediterranean, and I, I loved it. And uh, I decided to come back there when I had a – I didn't want to live on a kibbutz. I wanted to be an artist. Right. So I actually uh, went to Israel back in, in 1972. I immigrated to Israel and uh, I opened a, a gallery. My uh, The city actually gave me a place because I qualified that they subsidized called the Jerusalem House of Quality. I was there for a few years until I opened my own gallery 
right across from the King David Hotel, and it was an immediate success. I was making biblical sculptures. Wow. I guess if I had gone to Spain, I would have been doing flamenco dancers and bullfighters. <laughs> I, went to Israel and I did uh, the Bible. I did uh, over 50 sculptures from the Bible. Wow. My first exhibition in the House of Quality had a workshops upstairs for the artists. And downstairs, they had a gallery where each artist would have an exhibition once a month. Mm -hmm. My first exhibition in 1974 Leah Rabin, the wife of the Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, saw my sculpture of David and Goliath and thought, what a perfect gift this will make for the President of the United States on his trip to Washington to talk to, Ford, to Gerald Ford about replacing the arms and ammunition that Israel lost in the 1973 war. Wow. So uh, and she, she saw that sculpture. She talked to her husband about it and and wound up making my name in Israel. It was uh, televised internationally on the news. Here he is presenting my sculpture of David and Goliath, symbolic of a small country against mighty oppressors. Yeah, wow. In his Washington address to Ford. Wow. We only found it recently, like maybe 10 years ago. My wife found it on Google that it's in the Gerald Ford Library Museum, that piece that he presented. That's awesome. David and Goliath, the original. But I made replicas in all different sizes since yeah. then. And that probably was the key to get me started, my most important commission, I would say. Wow. So you started, so you had a gallery in Israel. Was it also called Gallery 22? Gallery 22. The name oh. 20, the number 22, my my father died when I was 22 years old. Oh. And he was born on the 22nd of October. And my first house was at 22 Ramat Galan Street. And my first daughter was born on the 22nd of November. And this just keeps going on. I think every 22nd of the month, something symbolic happens in my life. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's impressive. That's impressive. Wow. So what kind of mediums do you work in besides? Because I know you do a lot. Um, like only by looking at the background of your of your video right now, we see a lot of different things. So what kind of different um, things do you work on? Well, I'm known for my silver because that sculpture that, that, of David and Goliath was silver. And from then on, presidents and uh, dignitaries would commission me to do silver sculptures. I was kind of known as the silver ambassador. They would present it to South African kings. They would use it uh, as gifts of state to, to presidents, to important dignitaries that would come to Israel. And uh, for, for the occasion of the peace between Israel and Egypt, I was commissioned by the Prime Minister Yitzhak uh, Shamir, at the, no, at the time it was Menachem Begin. Actually, Ariel Sharon was his idea, but they decided Menachem Begin would present it to Anwar Sadat on the occasion of the Camp David peace treaty between Israel and Egypt. It was a sculpture of uh, Isaiah's prophecy of peace. The lion will lay down with the lamb. No harm will come upon them, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. And that piece was, uh, you know, it was important. It yeah, was a, for sure. A piece of culture. And then I've been doing, I did one also on the occasion of uh, the peace treaty between Jordan and and Israel, one for Bibi Netanyahu and one for the king of Jordan, a globe in silver of uh, Jerusalem as the center of the world with two doves of peace flying over Jerusalem. So oh, I've done peace, wow. a lot of peace sculptures right. I think, that have to do with promoting peace mm -hmm. with, between Israel and various countries. South Africa was presented to uh, the Prime Minister of South Africa from Yitzhak Rabin, gave him a David and Goliath, symbolic of their mission, what was going on yeah. in South Africa. So there was the Bible was used as a, a symbolic you know, I, they would discuss with me. The president would invite me to his house, mm -hmm. to, uh, President Navone. He would ask me, what, what should we do for the king of Swaziland? I'm going to visit him 
So let's do Samson breaking the lion's jaw. So wow. Af African kings, they would like a lion as strength. Right. So, would, you know, they would discuss with me beforehand and invite me to the president's house afterwards to let me know how the presentation went. Mm -hmm. So I, I got the title of court sculptor because I was working for both <laughs> left hand or right <laughs> so you you do but yeah so you do you do sculpture but uh from looking at the back over there you're doing some art as well and you got I some jewelry I, right I so a you do a little bit of everything I do, I do commissioned portraits yes like the one I, back here yeah yeah that was a commission actually that was your father's idea to do uh his dream board of uh of, of directors yeah <laughs> For sure, yeah. And so he's got he's got Bill Gates in there yeah. and Warren Buffett and Alfred E. Newman and Homer Simpson and and at the end he says, put yourself in at the table next to Walt Disney. So you're so, so if you're seeing two Yakov, you're not going crazy. One is with me and one is with in the other side of the screen. hundred <laughs> percent. That's awesome. So what is what is your most recent work that you're working on right now? Well, the most recent thing that I've done that's important is a sculpture of Benjamin Ferenz, hmm. the Nuremberg prosecutor. I, he actually sat for me at 99 years old. He just turned 100. Wow. But Benjamin Ferenz is the last living Nuremberg prosecutor. And uh, uh, when we unveiled the piece, he said, I want this piece to go to the international criminal court in The Hague, which is, he actually was was significant in founding that organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, his son, who is a lawyer who lives abroad, lives in Europe, is talking to them right now about where they're going to put it. Wow. But Benjamin Fern All right, I think there he is. Yakov? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, cool. So again, we're, we're talking to Yakov Heller. If you're interested in reaching out to him, his phone number is 561-347-1677, or you can also reach uh, him through his new website that he created. Uh, it's called yakovheller.com. Yakov, what are some of your favorite installations you've ever done in South Florida? The most favorite is the Garden of Humanity. It's... Uh... It's right around the corner from my gallery, actually. Yeah. In Moral Palm Place, Boca Raton, downtown Boca Raton. Mm -hmm. It's open to the public 24 hours a day. 14 benches, as a matter of fact. I, I'm talking about Ben Ferenc. Meet him. Is the, there's 14 benches. Yeah. With well, writer and authors and... The first bench is Benjamin Ferenc, a quote of his about, mm -hmm. about Nuremberg. And uh, on that first, that bench, there's a, there's a documentary out about the life of Ben Ferenc on Netflix. Right. You can see it on Netflix. But it's called Prosecuting Evil. And uh, the producer of that show, that that vid, that movie that documentary he actually saw my bench took a picture of it sent it to ben Ferenc. ben Ferenc said i want to see my bench i want to meet you <laughs> and that's how they came to me they called me up and they said there's a screening at the fau living room theater just for the family of the documentary we'd like to invite you and bring a guest and i brought my friend arlene herson wow. who was on the board of the u.s national holocaust museum Mm -hmm. See, the Garden of Humanity is actually a memorial to all the genocides of the 20th century, right. starting with the Armenian genocide in, in 1915 mm -hmm. that went on for till 1922, where two-thirds of the Armenian population were annihilated by the Ottoman Turks, which they've still never admitted to. And then it goes on to the main Holocaust of uh, the six million Jews in the Second World War, 
Right. But it reads into that because Hitler said to his his armies in, in, uh, before they invade, two weeks before they invaded Poland, he was talking about the Armenian genocide. They, you know, they were never uh, called to try. There was no Nuremberg. Right. Yeah. Wow. So you, so you have that's your favorite installation ever done. Now I, I feel like you've done a lot of other things like sculptures around South Florida. Can you name a few of them that you've done? Well, the first one that I did actually, which was really what brought me to Boca Raton, was Flossie's Fountain in oh, Meisner wow. Park. Uh, it's a 15-foot fountain and bronze, seven-foot bronze sculpture. Mm -hmm. uh, reaching for the stars. Uh, it was called Pathway to the Stars. Yeah. Flossie Keesley was was the first lady of daytime television. Mm -hmm. uh, I happened to meet her and told her about my career as a sculptor, and she wanted to see some of my things, so I took her to Miami, showed her my 12-foot my bronze fiddler on the roof and my 10-foot celebration of life outside the top of Center for Life Enhancement, and she said, that's it, I want you to do my, she had the rights because she gave, she and Countess the only actually donated a lot of money to build the, the Meisner Park Amphitheater. Mm -hmm. but this was her thing was, was show business, helping young people in show business get onto the big stage. Right. So it's called Pathway to the Stars. So she's reaching up, well, actually there's one model of it right behind me. I don't know if oh, you there know. it is, yeah. But that's what it looks like. Wow. But that's it's, cool. uh, like I said, it's a found that's 12 feet high or 15 feet high, seven foot bronze. Mm -hmm. I see, I see in your, on your screen there on the, to your left, I believe it's my right. You have a revolving hand holding a heart. What, what's that? That's the golden hand of Ma Dr. Malcolm Dorman. It's a very interesting story. What happened there was that uh, is a famous heart surgeon. He worked with DeBecky in Houston for 20 years. When DeBecky died in 96, he declared Malcolm Dorman as the man who knows more than anybody in the world about open heart surgery mm -hmm. and how to do double mammary operations. Which would... Anyway, <laughs> my sales girl, Carol, at the time, we're going back about 20 years ago, she said, she said, Yaakov, call me up at 11 o'clock at night. She said, my brother-in-law is in Boca. It was a community hospital at the time. Mm -hmm. And they won't operate on him. They said he hasn't got a 10% chance of making it through the operation. It was so serious. He was a 50-year-old retired New York City policeman who would retire early because of his heart problem. Right. And uh, she said, you know this famous heart surgeon, Malcolm Dorman, can you do something? And she's crying. I said, look, I'll give him a call. I called Malcolm. Malcolm says, get an ambulance, bring him to me immediately. He was the head of Miami Heart at the time. Wow. So that's what, that's what uh, they did. They took him to Malcolm. Make a long story short, he, sur he lived. Uh -huh. um, a month later, he was jogging in Boca Raton. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm saved his life, and my and my sales girl thought I was Moses. You know, so that, I said to Malcolm, I said, "Look, I you know I owe you a big one. What can I do?" He says, "Yakov, come with me to heart surgery, and I'll show you what I do. Right, and maybe it'll inspire you to to do something." So I went with him in the morning, seven thirty. I scrubbed up with the you know, put on the gloves and the mask. Like well, like we are today. <laughs> yeah. So here I am with a gown, and I'm at the head of the bed, and I'm looking down at the patient. is all like wrapped in cellophane. It didn't look like a human being, even you know. It's just uh, yeah. there. And uh, he takes out a scalpel, and he says, "Look, he uses the same tools that I do." And he opens up the chest cavity, and he says. Uh, he used a Fordham saw, don't you? You know, as he cuts the sternum, and you use clamps like this as he opens the chest, wow. and he got his hand on the, the man's heart, and uh, they put him on uh, the, the his team puts him on a heart lung machine as as wow. he's showing me the actual heart, and I said, Malcolm, I told him later at after lunch. <laughs> <laughs> that, your hand holding that heart—that's what I want to do. I want to make a sculpture of it. For you. I'll make one for you and one for me.
Well, that <laughs> looks he back in my studio with me. I actually made a mold of his hand, uh -huh. and we worked on the heart together with a piece of clay, putting in all the arteries and the pulmonary and the aorta, and the, you know, we we built it together. Yeah, that's amazing. It looks it looks beautiful from from afar. It's like I can't imagine what it looks like yeah, face to face. Silver yeah. hand holding it. It's all sterling silver on a gold plated heart. Wow. But it's very accurate as far as the details. You've got even the, the fat cells on the, wow. on the on the veins and arteries. You know? That's awesome. Again, we're talking to Yakov Heller, um, sculpture artist uh, in Boca Raton from Gallery 22. His website is yakovheller.com. His phone number, if you want to contact him, is 561-347-1677. Yakov. You, we've been talking a lot about how you know things you've done in the past, things you've done like currently working on. But if somebody came up to you right now and asked you to do a commission work, uh, do you still do like you no know, um, special pieces for jewelry, portraits, sculpture, installation, things like that? Yes, I do. As long as I'm not working on a major commission, I do. I do large sculptures. I do. Uh, my favorite is to do installations, large installations. Mm -hmm. If I'm not busy, like right now, for instance, I would do a commission for some. Sometimes I have like a, a whole team from the Bronze Foundry in Palm Beach. I, I work with a wonderful foundry. I take the whole crew with me to a place like Baltimore, and we build a Holocaust Memorial. If I'm not busy doing an outdoor installation, I love to do commissions. Busy hands are happy hands. I have my workshop right here in the back of my gallery 22 in Royal Palm Place. And uh, I do, I do commit. I'm doing things for people right now. I just did a, a lady just picked up a piece yesterday, a necklace that I made for a, a commission. Wow, that's awesome. So yeah, if, if, if anyone's interested in, in commissioning something with you, um, I'll highly suggest going to his website right, right below yakovheller.com or just give him a call at 561-347-1677. Yakov, before I let you go, um, I've been asking this question to everybody that I've been interviewing lately, and it's, I feel like it's going to become like a, a question I ask every time I close. Um, you know, you, you kind of said earlier in the beginning that you've always known you were going to be like work in art, you've always known you were an artist. But like, what are, what's, one, what's one piece of advice you can give to a, a young person, either a college graduate or a high school graduate, that don't know what they're going to do about their profession? They, they, don't, they don't know what to do next. Um, you know, and what, what's that advice that you would give? Um, what, what would that be? Find something that you love to do. It'll come to you if you don't know what it is. But if you find something that you love to do and you pursue it, and today especially it's so easy to do that. You've got all the tools. You've got uh, – you go on YouTube, you can find any lesson that you want. You don't have to – to find a college, an art school, whatever, uh, anything that you want to do, you can find it today on the internet, on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, but find a passion, something that you love to do, and you'll never work a day in your life, because that's, that's what it is. If you find something you love to do, it's fun. I, I lived for my work. I love it. Mm -hmm. That's that's very that's very and good I'm advice. So I'm with the I'm with the Rotary Club of Boca Raton, as you know, and, mm -hmm. and what we do is we raise money for scholarships for kids, and the, and I mentor. I, I just recently mentored uh, a young lady who uh, was sent to me from FAU in the arts department, and uh, this is this is what I tell them. I said, look, you you have to pursue your passion, and then it won't be work. You'll love what you're doing, and you'll do it really well. Yeah, that's 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 very good advice. Every, every week there's different there's a different uh, layer to um, the advice I'm getting, and that's a really good one, uh, for sure. Do something that you love, and you never work a day in your life. Um, again, Yakov, thank you so much for taking your time to uh, talking to us today. I know you're a, I, know, I know you're a busy guy, but I do appreciate you coming on today on the show. Thank you, Pedro. It's been a pleasure. It's always nice talking to you. Always nice talking to you. Again, guys, if you want to reach out to Yakov, his uh, email, uh, his website, sorry, is yakovheller.com. And if you want to reach out to him through his phone number, just give him a call at 561-347-1677. Um, it was a great um, interview. Thank you so much for Yakov to joining us. Again, don't forget to follow us on social media. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. All those right there, Boca Tribune.
is our handles. You can also download our app. It's called, just go to the Google Play Store or the App Store, search for Boca Raton Tribune, you'll find it. The app is awesome. You can you can get all the news you get on the, on the website, but you, also a new feature you can do is called I Report, which you yourself can become the reporter. You see music around your neighborhood when you're going out to get some food at Publix or whatever, um, you know, just simply to go to the I Report tab, put the title, put the body of the text, you can attach a photo, and from there, send it to us, and we will publish it on a website with your name on it. And so you become a reporter, hence I report. But again, thank you so much for joining us today on Business Highlight. My name is Pedro, and I will talk to you next week.